We've tested hardware transcoding with Intel QuickSync enabled CPUs in our build recommendations video, and NVIDIA GPUs in our P2000 benchmarking videos, so it's only right that we test AMD cards. Today we are going to test the AMD RX 580 and the AMD RX Vega 64 to find out just how well they stack up against their competition. <laughs> The RX 580 and RX Vega 64 can be found on Amazon for around $330 and $550 respectively. On paper, they both appear more powerful than the NVIDIA Quattro P2000. Since they don't have an arbitrary driver limitation of two transcodes like NVIDIA consumer grade cards, these should do quite well in Plex, right? Well that's what I thought too, and with people asking me about the performance of AMD cards on Reddit and YouTube, I decided to give them a go and put them to the test. The RX 580 was never able to get more than 6 H.265 transcodes running regardless of what machine I put it in. It didn't seem to do much better at H.264 transcoding either. The performance was a shock to me. It seemed to be the bottleneck of every system I tested it in. In the end, it was so bad that I flat out gave up testing on this card, as using it as a Plex media server just doesn't make any sense to me due to its price and relative performance. As you can see by the comparison graphs, the RX 580 performs about as well as our small build server recommendation, but costs more and you still need a computer to run it in. The performance just doesn't pencil out. So surely AMD's flagship RX Vega 64 GPU should turn the tides, right? Look at this thing. It scores 11,762 in Passmark. Compare that to the 7,727 score of the P2000. It's only about 5% slower than the GTX 1080 and it costs roughly $550. On paper, the RX Vega 64 should be a powerhouse, but in reality, the story is quite different. The RX Vega 64 was marginally better than the RX 580. Instead, you could save some money and go with our medium build or custom large build recommendation and get at least equal and in most cases better performance. This doesn't even take into account the power cost of running an RX 580 or an RX Vega 64 versus an energy efficient QuickSync capable Xeon V3 or V5 CPU. For the cost of the cards and the electricity they use, the performance I got out of them can best be described as shitty. How shitty you ask? So shitty that I thought there was a problem with the hardware that I was using to test them. Whether that was the server or the processor in the server, I ended up moving them to an entirely different server and the performance didn't improve at all. So I again moved it to another server until I finally conceded that the bottleneck was actually the GPU itself. Here is a comparison of these cards against our small build T1700 that can be found on eBay for only $200. The AMD consumer grade GPUs just aren't good at hardware transcoding in Plex. For the cost of the GPU, the power it consumes, and the performance you get, I don't think it makes any sense to use them for this purpose. They may make great gaming cards, but they definitely do not make good Plex media servers. The RX 580 and the Vega RX 64 both performed about the same as our small and medium build recommendations. They used more power and cost a hell of a lot more. At $200 for the entire computer, our small build is a much better purchase than these consumer grade AMD GPUs. For comparison's sake, here are some graphs comparing them to our small and medium builds. As you can see, compared to running QuickSync on any of our build recommendations, they really just don't compete at all. You might be wondering why we haven't tested AMD's WX lineup. Well, we might come back to that at a future date, but I'm not getting my hopes up as I'm not really impressed at all with AMD's consumer grade GPUs. In contrast, if you unlock a GTX 980 with the Nvidia driver patch and Linux, you can actually get some amazing performance out of the cards, even though you can only do hardware accelerated encoding and you're forced to rely on CPU to do the software decoding. More can be found on our website for a full tutorial about how to unlock the NVIDIA cards. There's also a great video on Jason's YouTube channel, Bite My Bits, which goes over all of this and walks you through the process of installing the hacked drivers. I highly recommend you head over there and give it a watch if you're interested. He also has really great Plex content outside of that video, so it's a great channel to check out. 
I wish I could say the AMD cards perform better. I got my hopes up as the cost of the cards is generally a bit less than Nvidia's same lineup and they're consumer grade cards, so they're fairly cheap, but they really just don't pencil out at all. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. We're a small channel trying to grow and any support from you helps us tremendously. And as always, please make requests in the comments on topics you might want to see us cover at a future date.